Hello, Clayton Stuffelbeam here. Today we're going to talk about a topic that I'm pretty passionate about, and that's corn planters as a whole, and then high-speed planting. So we've tested uh, high-speed planting for the past two seasons, and we have two years of yield data on that today as we sit. I'm going to talk about the yield data first, then we're going to talk about suggestions how to be successful with high-speed planting. So in 2019, we started our journey with high-speed planting, testing a standard seed tube versus precision planting's speed tube that was re released a few years ago. That paired with V-Sets makes a pretty good system and we thought it was important to go ahead and test that. So we had some research data for you. So two year data at three speeds, five, seven and a half, and 10 miles an hour. Split planter, so these three rows here would be standard seed tube. And then the final three rows would be precision planting's speed tube tested at those three speeds. So the two year data, um, with a standard seed tube, our yield was 207 bushels per acre. With a speed tube, our yield was 204.6 at 10 miles an hour. So we lost 2.4 bushels per acre at 10 miles an hour versus the standard seed tube at 5 miles an hour. So we did lose a little bit of yield there, but I think we can gain that yield back and in, in fact have more yield in other ways, which we'll talk about here pretty quick. When we compare the seed tube versus the speed tube at those given speeds, just comparing them at the same speed, we are seeing that the speed tube is outperforming the standard seed tube at those three speeds. In tune to three bushels to the acre on average is the performance of that speed tube versus the seed tube. Now, how can we capitalize on increasing our yields through higher speed? And I think that is being able to plant more corn or soybeans in a given planting date window. So those given planting date windows would be for, for our long-term PFR planting date data for all of our locations, we have seen for the month of April as our best, best time to plant both crops. So how can we achieve that? If you're a grower that's looking to plant more acres or might be growing your operation, whether that's increasing your planter size or speeding your planter up, those are basically the two decisions you might be making. So with a 16 row planter, I am able to plant about 17 acres an hour at five miles an hour. With a 24 row planter, I'm going to be able to plant about 25 and a half acres per hour at five miles an hour. So if I take that 16 row planter and, and I increase my speed, can I plant more than I can with a 24 row planter? In fact, potentially I can. So if I increase my speed from eight or five miles an hour to eight miles an hour, I'm gonna increase my planted acres from 17 to 27. So I'm gonna gain almost 10 acres per hour with the same planter I have in the shed, okay? But we still have to do a good job and that's my next part of this. So doing a good job is really important. So when we started our high speed testing two seasons ago, this is the unit we had on the corn planter. This is a 7200 Max Emerge 2. And 2019 went very well for us. Our data was really, really good for high speed planting. As we brought the planter into this shed to do our maintenance, I started to realize we had some issues. And this was last winter. Realized we had a crack right here, right in front of the gauge wheel studs. So I didn't think much of it at the time. We only did one high speed trial. It wasn't you know, it wasn't a 50 acre trial, it was relatively small, but we still had cracks here, but I thought over time this unit's almost 30 years old and it had just seen enough fatigue to start causing some issues. So we walled those cracks back shut and fixed them and we started our 2020 planting. We planted all of our trials and then we finished our, our speed tube and we had four trials and 80 acres of fill left to go. We decided to plant the 80 acres of fill at eight miles an hour with a six row planter so we could get done faster. And we didn't realize at the time what kind of damage we were going to do to these units. So what happened is, you'll see here, this is my speed tube guard and the speed tube fits in that unit just like this, okay? What would happen is, is that unit would vibrate going through the field, these roll pins that hold that speed tube guard in place vibrated out of the shank. And the front roll pin then came out and would allow that to make contact with the speed tube. And then 
in turn, those seed disc openers didn't have this to rest on and were flexing and would actually wear into the side of that speed tube and then the speed tube guard was actually beating on the front or the bottom of the speed tube and it caused some cracks. Cracks. It also cracked the cleats on the belt. So we had to replace those housings before this next season and we had to replace the belt in every single unit because of the damage we caused because this unit here is not built for high speed planting. It just, just simply was not designed for it. So here is my suggestions to help you be more successful with high speed planting. Number one is that row unit. So if you're deciding to upgrade your current planter, make sure your planter has a, a cast iron row unit like this here. We decided to go with John Deere's Maxi Merge 5 row units for our 7200 planter uh, for the 2021 growing season. Those are cast iron and are designed for high speed planting. But there's other manufacturers out there as well that you can utilize for high speed. Just make sure it's either a cast iron unit or if it's stamp steel, make sure it's a nice and thick shank that you believe it'll handle the shocks from high speed planting. The other portion we've realized the issues, we've actually buckled the shank here, okay? Because the stamped steel is not very thick and those seed disc openers are actually rubbing on the top of the shank. The shank is buckled and because of that, we don't, didn't think we could utilize it in our plot research any further. Number two for my suggestions for, for uh, being more successful with high speed is I think you have to run individual row to row control hydraulic downforce. So on this planter, we use uh, Precision Planting's Delta Force. That is so we can have individual row by row control and it reacts very fast. And we need that, we need that fast reaction as we increase our speeds with high speed planting. Good downforce will help keep our depth control good. So if we're targeting two inches of depth on corn, we want to keep that at 10 miles an hour. And it will also help with our ground contact. So we want to keep good ground contact on our gauge wheels. So we want to be locked and loaded all the time with, with the planting surface. Number three, that good ride comes into the next section. When, for good ride being good will help contribute to good singulation on the meter. So as that meter launches that seed off of the disc and into a regular seed tube, that seed is out of our control at that point. And if that row unit's chattering up and down, it might increase or decrease the distance from seed to seed. So seed release index or SRI as precision planting calls it is a map that the 2020 generates. And that map showed us last year with our regular seed tube rows, as we increased our speeds, the SRI value would become really poor. It would actually make red on our map. So it was very inconsistent when it was placing seed to seed and that spacing was in fact changing. And it's really important to keep those things in tune. Number four is closing wheels. So we have tested closing wheels um, at normal speeds for many years, but as we increase our speeds, do you think we need to have different closing wheels? Initial thought for me was solid rubbers or heavy cast iron wheels would be the best, because I thought these spikes might be too aggressive and we might move the seed. But we have realized that the high, the, in high speed scenarios, aftermarket closing wheels are doing just as good as they were in comparison to solid rubber. So we're seeing the same yield advantages at higher speeds with these aftermarket wheels as we are with normal speeds. What about working ground? So this is a question today that I have that I don't have an answer to. So we've tested high speed in conventionally worked ground. So I would like to test it in no-till, uh, vertical tillage, and then again in conventional and to see if we can keep all of the aspects I previously talked about in good standing. And then last but not least would be planter maintenance. So as we increase our speeds, we're gonna introduce wear to that planter unit that might not have been there at five miles an hour. So we need to pay attention to our row units and our toolbar, our parallel arms, still index your row units to make sure your depth is consistent from row to row, and just keep better track of things when you go into your winter maintenance every winter. 
So for 2021 and beyond, we are going to take our high-speed testing to new levels. So for 2021, we are going to test other systems for high-speed planting. Uh, we plan on testing and answering that question, do we need to work our ground before planting at higher speeds? Or can we plant higher speeds in no-till? Should we increase our closing wheel tail pressure? Do we need more weight on our closing wheels? Should we utilize Yetter's cast twister versus their poly twister? Those are questions that we all have that we hope to answer in the coming seasons. So please stay tuned. Thanks for watching today.